looking at canonical forms. We're going to look briefly at canonical forms. There's much more that could be said. So basically, the word canonical means a standard, a standard form. So there are standard forms for systems to be put into, and if you have it in that form, you can see certain properties. So um, we're going to talk first about a little bit about loss of controllability, and then we're going to look at can canonical forms for controllable systems. So under what conditions might you lose controllability? Or might you not have controllability? So it turns out that if you randomly generate a system, I randomly generate an A matrix and a B matrix, almost invariably it will be controllable. Okay, That is, in order to have a system that is not controllable, it actually takes a certain structure uh, and basically it requires zeros to be in certain places in order for that to happen. So in, if certain structures added to the random system, then it is possible to get uncontrollability. But generally, you will get controllability. Now, we've seen that with a continuous time system, we can apply a, a, a D to A and A to D converters to convert that into a discrete time system and get an equivalent discrete time system. And uh, so we get from our A, B, C, D matrices, I can get some new uh, system matrices in discrete time. And you can go through and show that controllability can be lost through the process of sampling. Okay, That is, if your continuous time system is controllable, once you sample it, because remember, in between samples, you're throwing away whatever the system is doing. If you sample it, it's possible to get a system in which you do not have controllability. So that is a possibility. However, the nice thing is that even though controllable, controllability can be lost, it will be maintained for almost all sampling periods. That is, um, for almost all, that means all sampling periods except for a po possibly a finite number of specific values. So for example, for if one value of sampling period gives you an uncontrollable system, if you just tweak that to slightly to the right or to the left, you will be able to get something that is controllable if the original system was controllable. So, so we have that situation. We can also talk about systems as being nearly uncontrollable. So remember, your, your QC matrix must have full rank. Well, it can have full rank, or if you take QC and you look at the singular value decomposition, you might have a singular value that's really, really small. It's not zero, but it's really small, in which case the system is said to be nearly uncontrollable. In which, which case, basically, that means that certain states can be difficult to control. On the other hand, if you have multiple input systems, systems with multiple inputs, then the system can actually be strongly controllable. For example, each in, so it has multiple inputs coming in. Each input uh, can be, um, the system could be controllable through each of the inputs. So it's not only controllable but it's controllable by, multi for, by multiple paths, in a sense. Now, in looking at the subject of controllability and canonical forms, we need to talk about something called uh, a cyclic matrix. So a matrix A is said to be cyclic if there's some vector x in Rn, not 0, such that the determinant of this matrix is equal to 0. And if we look at this matrix, is, this matrix looks like a controllability matrix. In fact, it is a controllability matrix if B is single input for a single input system and B is X here. So if there's some non-zero X such that this is satisfied, then our matrix is cyclic. Okay. And so a special thing about this is that if two matrices F and G are both cyclic and if they have the same characteristic polynomial, so two cyclic matrices that have the same characteristic polynomial, then there is a transformation matrix T that tra that in which I can transform from one uh, coordinate system to the other. I can so th I have this relation. The two matrices are similar to one another. So uh, I encourage you to look at the proof of this. It involves the use of A invariant subspaces, and um, it's somewhat involved. Uh, but in the proof of this we end up having this matrix that pops out in our proof. Okay, So this matrix has a specific form. It's called a companion matrix. And there are a number of different companion matrix forms. This is one form. 
and it gives rise to something called the controllability canonical form. So if in the proof, if you use the transformation matrix, then you can actually get it into this form if your system is controllable. controllable. So this is called the controllability canonical form. It's a standard form, and it uses the companion matrix this way. Okay, so this companion matrix is special in that if you look at basically this part of the matrix, I have zeros and then an identity matrix down here. These elements here, these coefficients, actually are coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. So I can actually see the characteristic polynomial through this companion matrix. So it's a very special matrix. And then my B is of this form. It's all zeros and then a 1. So that's the controllability canonical form. A similar canonical form is called the controllable canonical form. The controllable canonical form also has a companion matrix. Notice that it's, it's different than I have this column of zeros and then this identity matrix. And then I have the, the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial along the bottom here. I all again have zeros and ones. So this is a standard form for controllability. Uh, uh, for controllable systems. So this is the controllable canonical form, and if I and, and it's uh, particularly handy in working, uh, going back and forth between a uh, a transfer function and a state model because these coefficients are actually coefficients of the, the denominator in your in your transfer function. Okay, and so this is a standard form. One of the nice things about this standard form is we always know it's going to be controllable. So, that controllable canonical form. So we've looked at a number of tests for controllability. Uh, we've seen that controllability is a basic structural property of systems, that control controllability for both continuous and discrete systems uses the same tests, and that certain canonical forms can be obtained using the controllability matrix. Controllability is also related to reachability. Controllability can also be used to obtain a state feedback gain that places eigenvalues arbitrarily. So these are the main properties of controllability. Stay tuned for the proofs of some of these theorems.